Columns in a building usually have a rectangular cross section. To ensure effective load transfer, the columns need to be wider than the beams they support. However, some situations demand a greater cross section of the column to obtain a desired load carrying capacity. And since the width of the column is restricted, it becomes difficult to achieve the required cross section. In such cases, the required cross section can be achieved by increasing the depth of the column. This may create problems when orienting the columns and to avoid this, following points shall be noted. The projection of columns outside the walls should be avoided. When columns extend beyond the walls, they not only look bad but also make it difficult to use corners and place furniture against the wall. To avoid these issues, the depth of the column should be contained within the width of the wall. The column should be oriented in such a way that its depth is perpendicular to the major axis of bending. When a column is connected to beams at right angles, it will experience moments as well as the actual load. In these situations, the column should be oriented so that its depth is perpendicular to the major axis of bending. This will increase the moment of inertia, which means greater moment resisting capacity. Additionally, this orientation will decrease the L effective upon D ratio, thus enhancing the load carrying capacity of the column. To make it easy for you, let's consider a column layout with the assumed orientation of columns as you can see in this picture. The width of each column is 230 mm, depth of each column is 300 mm, and the width of each beam is 230 mm. Now let's see the orientation of column 1. To decide the orientation of column 1, we need to identify the major axis of bending for this column. It can be seen that column 1 is connected to beams B1 and B4, with B4 having a larger span than B1. This means that the moment due to the load carried by B4 will be greater than that of B1. As a result, the dimension of the column perpendicular to B4 will need to resist a greater moment than the one perpendicular to B1. The question now is, which side of the column can resist maximum moment? For that, we need to identify which side has the greater moment of inertia. The greater the moment of inertia, the higher will be the moment resisting capacity. Let's calculate the moment of inertia about x and y axis of the column. Moment of inertia about x axis will be given by BD cube upon 12, where B is 230 mm and D is 300 mm. Again, the moment of inertia about y axis will be DB cube upon 12, where D is 300 mm and B is 230 mm. It's clear that the moment of inertia about x axis is greater than the moment of inertia about y axis, which implies that the major axis of bending will be x axis. We have already seen that the dimension of the column perpendicular to B4 will need to resist a greater moment than the one perpendicular to B1. Therefore, the depth of column 1 will be kept perpendicular to the span of B1. Hence, the assumed orientation of column 1 is absolutely perfect. Now, let's see the orientation of column 5 which is a side column. Column 5 is connected by the beams B4, B8 and B11. And since B4 and B11 lie on the same axis but in opposite directions, the net moment on this axis will be generated by 6 meter minus 5 meter that's 1 meter span, which is lesser than the span of B8 that's 4 meter. As a result, the dimension of the column perpendicular to B8 will need to resist a greater moment than the one perpendicular to B4 and B11. Now, we need to identify the side having the larger moment of inertia. The moment of inertia about x axis is given by BD cube upon 12, where B is 230 mm and D is 300 mm. Again, the moment of inertia about y axis will be DB cube upon 12. As you can see, the moment of inertia about x axis is greater, therefore, the major axis of bending will be the x axis. As we have already seen that the dimension of the column perpendicular to B8 will need to resist a greater moment than the one perpendicular to B4 and B11. Therefore, the depth of column 5 will be kept perpendicular to the span of B4 and B11. Hence, the assumed orientation of column 5 is wrong and we need to rotate it by 90 degrees. Now, let's see the orientation of column 6. Column 6 is an interior column connected by the beams B5, B8, B9 and B12. And since B5 and B12 lie on the same axis but in opposite directions, the net moment on this axis will be generated by 6 meter minus 5 meter that's 1 meter span. Again, B8 and B9 lie opposite to each other on the same axis. In addition to the self weight, 
B9 will carry the load due to half span of the secondary beam B13, that's 3 meter. Therefore, the net moment along B8 and B9 will be due to the half span of B13 only. As a result, the dimension of the column perpendicular to B8 and B9 will need to resist a greater moment than the one perpendicular to B5 and B12. The moment of inertia about x axis will be dB cube upon 12, where d is 300 mm and b is 230 mm. The moment of inertia about y axis will be bd cube upon 12. As you can see, the moment of inertia about y axis is greater, therefore, the major axis of bending will be the y axis. Also, we have seen that the dimension of the column perpendicular to B8 and B9 will need to resist a greater moment than the one perpendicular to B5 and B12. Therefore, the depth of column 6 will be kept perpendicular to the span of B5 and B12. Hence, the assumed orientation of column 6 is right. We can follow the similar procedure for other columns as well. You can check out the complete building design combo course on eTabs and SAFE, wherein you will get to work on 6 separate models in eTabs and the complete foundation design in SAFE. Again, if you want to develop the proper skill set required for a site engineer, that too without going to the site, then you can enroll in our complete site engineer course, which is available in both Hindi and English. The link of the courses will be provided in the description box of this video.